what's going on everyone I've been tripping over this fish tank in the garden for too long now and I figure today's the day let's upcycle it and turn it into something useful having a little scrounge around the place I've got some old parts of a table as well as the legs I've also managed to find an old dog pen, which I'll be using the bars for the bottom grate. Now, I'm going to do an over-under here. That way, the, the tank shouldn't be able to slide forward, and I can chalk the sides later. So let's start by piloting holes. This means the wood shouldn't split when it sticks to the nail through later on. Next, I'm just going to bend down these little loops, which will give me some way to fix the grate to the frame, which should hold it all in place and support the weight of the casting a bit better later on. We're going to screw the frame together, pinching the grate between the two bits of wood. We're not going to screw all the way through at this point, so we can fix the legs a bit easier later. Nearing the end of the build stage now, I've fixed the legs, I've put on some little side braces for the legs at the back and the sides, and now I'm just going to tidy up all the overhanging bits of wood. Here. I've chosen a position which is kept in the shade for 90% of the day. There is, it is quite a bright area, but this should keep the worms at a consistent temperature. Let's get a little closer look for a second. So you see bars at the bottom. This is where I can just rake the material out once it starts collecting. Some support bars to keep the legs nice and straight. It means I should be able to get a bucket or wheelbarrow or a device underneath to collect the castings. So now let's think about getting this filled. When starting a system like this, it's good to start with some cardboard at the base. This is going to help the worm castings form a nice solid base so it's not going to fall out once the cardboard is broken down but the cardboard won't last forever. So, nice thick base of this because I don't plan on harvesting for at least six months or so. Next up we have some soaked shredded paper. I really underestimated the volume of this tank, so the layer of shredded paper is a bit abysmal. But I'm just gonna spread it out the best I can definitely needed a lot more paper but it's not a problem this is just forming our base of brown materials so hopefully this helps soak up all the nutrients that will be coming out of our green materials that will be going in shortly I'm actually going to pour the rest of this water in get that cardboard soaking hopefully get it breaking down sooner and as I didn't have as much shredded paper as I was hoping let's throw a bit more cardboard in there as I say, this is all just to help soak up the nutrients that will be coming out of the brown materials as they decompose. Now to finish the worm bedding, this is mostly finished compost. I'll be chucking about 15 to 20 litres in here. I'm aiming to have about 3 inches of bedding for these worms. Once I've got it all nicely spread out, even I should be around three inches at which point we'll give it a good soaking. I'm going to start with six liters of rainwater. I'm going to be leaving this to sit for a day or two before I introduce any worms, so if you really had to use tap water, 
I'm sure it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. But I'm just giving it a really good soaking down, making sure it's all nice and evenly moist. Hopefully all the way down to that cardboard. First watering can done. Let's get another one. And this is another six liters going in now. This time it's pooling a little bit, so it is getting nicely soaked. This won't happen as much, or hopefully at all, once the system starts operating and the cardboard's broken down. This pooling is mainly just because the cardboard's holding onto the water for now. Little by little, making sure to get in all the corners. I'm sorry if this is making any of you need the toilet. I find it rather therapeutic noise to listen to. Now, while that's draining, I'm going to start preparing a black and white sheet which is going to cover it to keep some of the sun off, keep it cool, and keep some of the heat in, hopefully. Some of them. Now that I've rested it into place, we'll get our faithful staple gun, and we're just going to staple across the back to hold it down. Now I'm going to grab a piece of baton. This is going to go at the top in the center, and this is just going to form a slight pitch at the top, which should hopefully stop any rain pooling on the roof. It'll also bear a bit of weight, so the sheet's not going to be flapping around. And a second piece of baton, baton. This is going to go at the front, just to hold the sheet down, make it a little bit more tidy, stop it flapping around. This will also give us something to pick up and move when we want to take the sheet off later, because I'm going to be folding the corners and stapling them to this baton, just to make it into one big sheet or one big lid even. I think that's got it. So we just give it a little lift, make sure everything moves cleanly and can come back down. I will have to go around and fix the corners and tidy it up with some scissors later on so it's not so flappy but if you enjoyed the content so far, far please give us a like and if you want to see how this gets on in the next few weeks please do consider subscribing and we'll catch you all in the next episode <laughs>